Hi folks, got another blog for you this week. Uh, I want to give you a quote from a man called George Friedrich Hegel, I think is uh, the pronunciation. And he said, Hegel once said, the only thing we learn from history is that we learn nothing <laughs> from history. In the United States of America, there's a woman called Bridget Gabriel. Bridget is a Maronite Christian from Lebanon. She lived there when she was a child. And when she was a child living in Lebanon, the Maronite Christians were in the majority. Uh, and she remembers that as a young girl, Lebanon was a prosperous place, good place to live in. Beirut was called the Paris of the Middle East. The Lebanese were very kind people and they welcomed immigration and at first they got on very well with the Muslim immigrants that went to live uh, with them. But eventually the Muslims outbred the Christians because they produced more children than Christians normally do. I believe uh, it, I read somewhere that Christians produce anything up to four children whereas Muslims up to ten children. And so it wasn't long before the Christians were in the minority. And Bridget relates that at that point, the Muslims declared jihad against the Christians. And according to Bridget, her account of the story, the Christians were slaughtered. History bears this out, of course. Uh, Christians being slaughtered, just like many are now in Iraq and Syria. Eventually, Bridget's uh, family escaped to the United States of America and now as a grown woman she travels around doing public speaking and warning Americans that the same thing could happen in the USA as it happened in Lebanon. She also claims that the UK is much further down the road than the U USA and that in the UK we, we're well and truly finished, that's her opinion. Wow, this is serious stuff, eh? I watched an interview with Bridget on YouTube and it lasted about an hour and a half. She stated that in the early days she had suffered some abuse from the uh, citizens of the USA because of the claims she was making and the warnings she was giving to the United States of America. And they told her it can't happen here. That's what they said. But now of course with recent events in Syria and Iraq Many of the critics are taking them more seriously. The sheer brutality of the Islamic State, or ISIS as they've been called, the recent public beheading of James Foley, and of course the earlier incident of Lee Rigby right here on the streets of London, folks are now taking her a little bit more seriously. However, when it comes to our country, our government seems to be totally inadequate to cope with such evil as we see going off around us. Cameron took a break from his holiday to make a very limp statement about Foley's death. And then he went back on his holidays if everything was normal again. <laughs> At the same time, we read that many British jihadists that have committed atrocities in Iraq and Syria have now returned to our shores to resume their lives amongst us. How long might it be before they commit such atrocities right here in the United Kingdom? You know folks we're living in very dangerous days and to make it worse we are led by very weak leaders. Few of them can see the signs of the danger and many are sticking their head in the sand and doing nothing about it. And that applies to many Christians also. If ever we needed wise and godly leadership, it's right now. But we have to face facts. We have a godless and liberal leadership in our country. What chance does our country stand with such leadership as we've got now? What protection will we have if trouble breaks out here? Already we see folks being intimidated on our streets by some of the anti-Jewish protesters. I read that food stores uh, that had to remove kosher food, that's Jewish food, from display because of fear of the protesters outside their stores on the streets. Where will it all end? 
We've just heard that over a thousand children have been sexually abused by Pakistani paedophiles in Rotherham in South Yorkshire over a period of 16 years. And those in charge of these children or the welfare of these children were too frightened to speak out because of political correctness even though they knew what was taking place. I read about one man who went to a house and tried to rescue his daughter from the clutches of these paedophiles he was arrested by the police. Would you believe that? You know, we could be forgiven for thinking this is a fairy story, but it's not, you know. It's happening in England in the 21st century. What kind of politicians have brought us to this place? And furthermore, what kind of people is it that keep voting for these people? When do we learn a lesson? If we think the problem will simply go away, we simply fool ourselves. If we think there will be a simple solution to all this, we're just kidding ourselves. The only thing we learn from history is that we learn nothing from history. You know, the reason all this is taking place in our country is because the nation has turned away from Christ and from its Christian roots. We are now reaping what we have sown. What we need in this country is a Christian revival but somehow I think it maybe is too late now for that to happen. History teaches us that every time the Jews turned away from their God who is the same God uh, as the Christian God they suffered terrible consequences and the same thing is happening to our country. The only thing we learn from history is that we learn nothing from history. You know, my advice to all who watch this video is this. Stick very close to Jesus, folks, because he will come and rescue us real soon. He has made wonderful promises to those who are faithful to him. Even those poor Christians in Iraq and Syria that have been slaughtered, he will not forsake them, and neither will he forsake us. And he is our only hope. Have a great week, friends. Think about these things. Bless you. Bye for now.